Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will show you the one year update of my do-it-yourself farmhouse flooring makeover. This is how it looks one year later. From far away, you can't really see any of the little imperfections that it does have. Quite a bit has happened to this uh, floor over the year, but it still holds up very well. You guys have had a lot of questions about this in another video I have done, so I will try to answer all of the questions that I've gotten about my flooring. Here's a quick little beforehand of my floor. It's dark and dingy spots or stains. I don't know what they are. I bought the contact paper at Target. Its color is called Driftwood, and this roll is about 20 feet long. If you want to watch me put the whole floor in, I will go ahead and link the video below. I've also tried another contact paper that I bought from the Dollar Tree on my floor. I'll link that video below too if you'd like to see it. Now a lot of you have asked if you can mop over the contact paper, and I have been able to mop over the contact paper with no problem. I use Lysol. I use, um, it's called Awesome from the Dollar Tree. I've used that before. I usually like to mop my floor about twice a week and usually I will go ahead and use a roller mop if I am using Lysol or the Awesome Cleaner and if you don't know what a roller mop is, I like the Libden Nitty Gritty. It's basically a sponge and it has a little lever that you push up and down that'll wring out the excess water and then I just mop it like you would mop any other floor. This is probably a little more abrasive than like other mops I've seen people use, like spin mops and things like that. I've also had several instances where here the dishwasher flooded and I've had some other instances where the upstairs neighbor's plumbing is linked into our plumbing and they don't understand how to use plumbing properly, I'm guessing. So we've had several water incidents that have, you know, even come down into the walls and so on, and I haven't had any problem with the kitchen floor at all. Of course, you're not gonna wanna try to have anything too sharp or abrasive around it, but here I had a whole basically brand new jar of jelly in here some spaghetti sauce jars fall and crack onto the floor and I didn't have any problem. Because I've been unable to find Lysol or any disinfectant, I've just been using squirt mop. Cleaners that are non-disinfectants have been a little easier to find. Um, a lot of people are wondering if you can wear shoes on this. Yes, I've worn shoes on it. My kids wear their shoes in here. My son plays with his cars on the floor or his little toys on the floor. They're running in and out of the kitchen. Um, the only main problem I see with any kind of a damage that comes to this floor is going to be probably if you have a kitchen set or a stool or a chair or something and you have that bad habit that I have sometimes where you're dragging stuff across your floor like you drag your chairs when you know you're supposed to pick them up but that usually damages most floors anyways which is why it's a bad habit to have but in my kitchen where I don't have any furniture where it's mainly foot traffic it's not been a problem I've had plenty of people ask me if water gets underneath the contact paper or if any of the seams lift up when you put water on it or if it gets any less sticky, all of those questions. And no, I have not found water to affect this stickiness or how well the paper lays down or anything along those lines. It stays very well in place as long as you're not you know, actively trying to remove it because if you're, you know, picking at the corners and trying to lift it up, it is fairly easy to remove. So I didn't have to worry about struggling to pry it off the floor afterwards. Like sometimes you would if, if you had installed, say, a wallpaper or something along those lines. Which also brings me to another important point that the longer you leave the contact paper, 
on your surface, the harder it's going to be to remove, the more permanent it becomes, even though it's not a permanent kind of a product, you're still going to get some almost hardening of the tackiness of the floor. But this isn't something that happens overnight. I mean, this has been a year floor for me. Um, I would say you would want to remove this before too many years go by. Another popular question I get is if you can wear high heels on this floor. Personally, I have never worn high heels on the floor. Um, my heels have a rubber sole to them anyways. I don't think it would be a problem. Um, I don't think regular shoes would be too much of a problem either. I think most of the problem lies in how you walk. If you drag your feet, if you're, you know, letting the edges and sharp points of your shoes kind of scuff across the floor too much, it's of course going to scratch or rip at the, at the flooring. I have also got a question about how slippery the floor looks and yes, this floor can be very slippery when it gets wet if you are not careful. It um, also makes it so that it repels stains, I think, better than normal floors do though for that exact reason. So it's a trade-off and if you know, you're careful enough to not walk on a wet floor in the first place, I think it's almost worth a trade-off to have an easier floor that repels stains and it cleans well. Now for some reason, my kids like to spill things everywhere. And I'm not sure how it happened, but my daughter gets her nail polish stuck to the floor here. So I take one of these um, safety scrapers and I even will scrape at the floor to get the nail polish off. I don't have any trouble with it, you know, cutting up the floor or anything like that. I have noticed that stickers, like children's stickers, seem to get abnormally stuck to this a lot. I don't know what that's all about. It, it just attracts stickers for some reason. But as you can see here, the nail polish just kind of flakes up really easily from the floor without damaging it. I'd say overall, I have been very surprised with the durability of this floor. And this is probably one of the most deciding factors for me. As you know, we had some flooding with our dishwasher and it turns out that we needed a new dishwasher. So we had a clumsy repairman drag out the old one and install a new one and there are only a couple little scrapes on the floor from it. And I was shocked because, I mean, this guy is not by any stretch of the imagination, like gentle or anything along those lines. So I was very, very surprised that there's very limited scratching from it and that it's very difficult to see and it does not affect the floor at all water doesn't get under it's yeah i'm very happy with it the only thing i might change is the color because i think i will want to do my cabinets here in the kitchen finally i've had enough flooding from upstairs i'm tired of just redoing the cabinets so i might end up taking the floor darker making the cabinets whiter, maybe even doing the countertops dark. We'll see how ambitious I get. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you have any more questions about any of my floors or anything, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below. I answer all my comments and don't forget to subscribe.